Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And I have just three announcements before we get into a couple of topics I want to talk about today. And one of them is our next intro to plant-based nutrition is tomorrow night, um, the 17th of July. Um, 90 minutes, teach you the science and skills, get you off to a quick start. If you're new to plant-based nutrition, highly recommend it. And then next week on the 23rd, Dell, our resident celebrity chef Dell, is going to do a um, uh, conversations with Chef Dell on summer soups, and he makes some really good ones. So um, if you're looking for good uh, creative ideas for our summer dining, and you know, I just have this great visualization of being out at the park and on the deck, and these are perfect foods for that. And then the third thing I wanted to tell you about is we, um, you know, my new book, Food Over Medicine, which is doing really well these days, has um, a lot of concepts that I think are important, ranging from the type of diet you're supposed to eat to learning how to be a savvy, savvy consumer of medical services. You guys hear me talking all the time about how you can be victimized by inappropriate diagnostic testing and medical care, even if you eat really, really well. So anyway, I want to spread the word about this, and we have a certification course that uh, will allow you to get my slide presentations on food over medicine and help other people learn learn how to do better decision making when it comes to healthcare. So with all that in mind, let's talk about healthcare issues. And the first one is erectile dysfunction, which has historically been a disease we thought affected older men. Um, but now it's affecting younger men. And erectile dysfunction, by the way, is an early sign of coronary artery disease. If you've seen Forks Over Knives, you might remember Dr. Terry Mason saying it's like the canary in the coal mine. It's the sign that something is wrong and it often precedes the development of serious coronary artery disease. Well, as I mentioned, we used to see this mostly in older men, but now it's starting to affect younger men. In fact, the study that I'm going to talk about today showed that 26% of men who visited an outpatient clinic for erectile dysfunction were 40 years old or younger, and that the rate of severity of erectile dysfunction was the same for the younger group of men and the older group of men. So the clinic evaluated these men. Um, they looked at their circulating testosterone levels. The men completed a questionnaire regarding sexual performance and their habits and that sort of thing. And um, the younger group of men had fewer diagnosed conditions. They were leaner, their BMI was lower, lower cholesterol, blood pressure, higher testosterone levels, but they were more likely to smoke or to use marijuana or cocaine. The older guys, on the other hand, were more likely to be taking medications for hypertension, diabetes, urinary tract symptoms, symptoms and reflux. No difference in alcohol consumption between the two groups. Now, in spite of these differences, both groups have the same degree of erectile dysfunction. Why? Because in spite of their ages and some of the habits and medications, those might have varied, they were all eating some version of the standard American diet and their arteries, the um, endothelial tissue in the arteries had been damaged to the extent uh, that, um, that they were having circulatory problems, coronary artery disease, and that is uh, one of the first signs, as I mentioned earlier, is erectile dysfunction. So we know that this is caused by animal protein and particularly fat that accompanies animal protein. Now, the sad part about it, and I always say this, you know, this article could be a great wake-up call, and maybe it is because this is important to men and women actually, but um, instead of saying, boy, we should get these people changing their diet and have this discussion, they instead focused on the idea that when people come in to be evaluated or for a doctor visit, we need to make sure we ask lots more questions so we can make sure to start treating people uh, for these conditions earlier. And so, you know, the best way to treat erectile dysfunction is to change the diet that causes it, and again, this was addressed in Forks Over Knives, much better than taking expensive medications that carry side effects um, that are uh, that should be concerning to everybody. So. Anyway, um, you know, and, and we see this with so many diseases that we used to look at only older people getting, and now younger and younger people are getting them too. All right, so next thing, let's talk about memory. I've been talking about this a lot. Um, I guess, first of all, I was inspired by Dr. Barnard's new book, Power Foods for the Brain. And also, I guess I've been inspired by the fact that I don't think I've done a lecture or a Q&A or a book signing that I can remember that didn't involve at least one question around memory, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's disease, etc. And um, you know, this people think it runs in families. People think it's genetic. Well, it's really diet and lifestyle, just like everything else. Uh, cognitive decline is a chronic degenerative condition. 
just like all the other foodborne illnesses you guys hear me talking about on these uh, little episodes. So a new study that included over 18,000 adults showed that better habits resulted in better memory. The specific behaviors that led to better memory were diet, not smoking, and regular exercise. Participants older than 60 reported healthier behavior than the younger ones, because I think so many times younger people think they're impervious, they don't have to worry about it. And 14% of the younger participants were already reporting problems with memory. The researchers reported that there are currently 34 million people suffering from dementia. Over 10% of those over 60 have it. Think about this for a minute, 34 million people, that's a lot. Age is the most important risk factor, and by the time people in our country reach the age of 85, 45% have lost their memory or have Alzheimer's disease or in some state of cognitive decline. And that's really frightening when you think about it. Um, it would be to me. I mean, I can't think of anything worse than not being able to read, watch television, engage in conversation, and have a fulfilling life. Because while I love having a strong, healthy body, think about living in that in a strong healthy body and having no capacity to engage in anything. Well anyway back to the study it included 18,552 adults in all 50 states several age groups 18 to 39, 40 to 59, and 60 to 99 and um, the researchers asked questions from the healthy behavior index concerning smoking healthy eating and exercise. The older group had um, much better eating habits and less of those participants smoked. Participants who reported that they didn't participate in healthy behaviors had increased uh, incidence of memory problems and smoking even increased the risk even more. Healthy eating, on the other hand, was related to better, better memory in all three age groups. And for the middle and older groups, weekly exercise had a profound effect too. The results were dose dependent. In other words, participants who engaged in one healthy behavior 21% less likely to have memory problems. Those who engaged in two, 45% likely, and three behaviors, 75% less likely to have memory problems. So the more good stuff you do, the more likely you are to have a sound, well-functioning mind and, and uh, good cognitive skills. So, you know, the goal as we age is to remain independent. And I know some younger people that listen to me are probably thinking, gosh, old age is so far away. Why do I want to worry about that now? Well, the reason you want to worry about it now is that if you do the right things now, you won't end up decrepit from a physical standpoint or from a mental standpoint when you're my age. Because believe it or not, at my age, I know people that are starting to lose their memory and not think so well. One last thing I'll mention to you about this cognitive decline thing and why you should really pay attention to doing the right things for your mind and your body. Um, one of my good friends many, many years ago developed Alzheimer's disease and I remember taking him out to lunch and um, after this was clearly what was going on. And he was brilliant. This was one of the most brilliant lawyers in the country. And um, he could tell you what was going on in 1955, but my gosh, he couldn't remember what he decided to order by the time the waitress came back to take our order. And um, I just sat there and thought, I miss my friend who is no longer there. The body is there, but the person, the soul of the person was completely gone. And my gosh, I don't want to end up like that. I don't think you do either. So eat a plant-based diet, exercise. If you're smoking, quit, take care of yourself. All right, well, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might like to watch it, and I'll be back on Thursday.